So before we start, let's pray together. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for saving us from eternal hell, saving us from eternal condemnation, and thank you for making us your children so we have this true hope and true peace in our heart because when Jesus comes, we'll leave this world and we'll join you in eternal heaven. Everything in this world is passing and they are meaningless and they are vanity of vanities. But now we know that you have prepared the glorious inheritance for us in heaven. So thank you so much for your blessing and grace. And now we are here again to listen to your word. Lord, help us to find your will in our life and help us to obey your will so that we can please you. Uh, there are so many things in this world which tempt us, but help us so that we do not fall into temptation. And the evil one, Satan, is always trying to uh, tempt us and threaten us. So Lord, please uh, keep us safe from this Satan and his uh, attack. And Lord, as we listen to the word of God, cleanse our heart and give us obedient hearts so that we can continue to serve you in coming days. Uh, especially, uh, we know that this time we are living is the last days and we want to preach the gospel to more people so give us chance to share this good news with others and there are brothers and sisters who are not who has not joined yet this uh, Bible study and fellowship so please lead their footsteps so that we, they can be together with us so from the beginning to the end I commit the rest of time unto your mighty hand in Jesus name I pray amen Okay, let's turn to uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verses 9 and 10. Let's read it together. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, Go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. So today I'd like to talk about obedience, and uh, this century on, uh, Jesus said, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Uh, Jesus praised his faith. Uh, his faith is better than anyone in Israel. And the reason is uh, because he said that, I am under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. The secret of his faith is obedience, actually, as a soldier. He knows how to obey his uh, superior, the authority. Come and he comes. Go and he goes. Do and he does. Actually. Let me tell you, uh, if I summarize Christian life in two words, first, we have to find God's will in our life. What is will of God? What God wants from me? And secondly, if you have found God's will in your life, you have to obey it. If you do these two things, you, know, you do very well in your Christian life. So why we are coming here uh, and uh, we listen to the Word of God and we, we study the Bible again and again to find out, to know God's will toward us. Why we are living in this world and why God saved me and why God like, uh, you know, uh, placed me in Korea or for me now in Bangladesh, uh, why God gave me such a family and why God uh, uh, gave me chance to study or work in this uh, company or school. So we have to find out God's will first, right? And then if we have uh, found out God's will, we have to obey it. Sometimes uh, like uh, 
you know, uh, when I go to another country for mission trip, they ask us, they ask me, Pastor, what is the secret of Korean churches? Why are they are so strong and active and they are uh, uh, growing? And I told them, uh, usually I, this is my answer, uh, maybe because is, uh, most of the Korean brothers, uh, they serve in the army, they know how to obey, right? Because I, I find it is really important to learn how to obey. And not only brothers, but also sisters also. Uh, in Korea, I find that they know, uh, they're really obedient and uh, whatever like a church asks them to do, they're willing to obey. Um, this is November. Usually in Swan Church in November, we uh, ask her, uh, brother, sister to become the church officer. The church, like uh, they have to lead uh, some group or they have to serve other brother, sisters. Most of them, they say yes. And whatever, whatever God is willing me to do, I will do that. Right? I really appreciate it. Of course, there are some brother, sisters. Uh, even I found when I first came to Swan Church, I uh, was calling one brother to ask him to be uh, to serve uh, in the next year. He didn't even pick up the phone. So I was so surprised actually because uh, there are no such brother. Even if they don't want to uh, serve as a church officer, at least they say, Pastor, I'm busy or uh, my health is not good. I'm not worthy. They, they kind of give me some excuse, but he didn't even pick up the phone. But that's very unusual, very unusual, and don't do that because, you know, like uh, uh, becoming church officer and serving the Lord in the church is a great opportunity, actually. Whatever God wants you to do in your life is for your own good. Do you know that? No. So when you find out God's will in your life and what God is planning for you, you will obey it because also you, when you know that the reward he is preparing for you, you will obey it. Let me tell you one thing. Among all gods in this God's creation, uh, only human and angel, they disobey God actually. All the other nature, like uh, creatures, animals, plants, universe, all the stars and everything obey God. Only human and angel can disobey God. And of course, there's a difference between human and angel. As a human, when we disobey God, but still we have a chance to repent. And when we repent and when we return to God, that is our salvation. When we accept the love of God, uh, believing that Jesus took away all our sins, we can be saved. But for angel, there's no chance whatsoever. So once they disobey, uh, disobey God, they have no chance to repent and they will be uh, cast into the uh, everlasting fire. But anyway, um, really interesting thing is the whole universe is obeying God except you know, we humans and angel. And think about us. You know, we are the one who disobey God. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah chapter 48. Verse 13, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 13, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 13. Let's read it together. Indeed, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. When I call to them, all the creatures in the universe, uh, they stand up together. Why? To listen to God. Standing up means uh, showing respect. You know, in Korea, when an elderly man enters the room, we stand up to show respect. Or suppose in the subway, you are sitting in the subway, but you see the very uh, elderly uh, people enter the subway, so you stand up and give the, your seat to them, right? So uh, when I call to them, they stand up together to listen to God and to obey God, right? And also, uh, let's turn to uh, Psalm 119, verse 91. Psalm 119, verse 91. 
Psalm 119, verse 91. Let's read it together. They continue this day according to your ordinances, for all are your servants. Of course, we are God's servant. If you understand this fact that God is our creator, God is our ruler, God is our judge, and God is our savior, then you will obey him, actually. You know, without God, we are nothing. God has created us, and God gives everything, including our life, food, and everything we need in our life it is provided by God. So God is the creator. We are creature, mere creature. If God takes our life today, we die, actually, right? God is creator, and God is the ruler of the whole universe. Everything obeys God's command and God's will. And God is also judge. He will judge everything we do. We do. And also, God sent Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, right? So when we understand God is the creator, ruler, judge, and Savior, of course we obey Him, right? That's why in the Bible, there are many scriptures teaching us how to obey authorities. Because this is really important in our Christian life. Do you obey your parents, your father and mother? It's important because when you learn how to obey your father and mother, you know how to obey God. That's why in Ten Commandments, first four commandments is about God. And the rest of it, the Sixth Commandments, is about uh, the human relationship, right? Between parents and children, uh, and uh, do not murder, do not steal, do not commit adultery. All this is uh, among you know, us. But the First Commandment, uh, in the second group of the uh, uh, commandment, the first one is always honor your father and mother. And the scripture says that commandment is the first commandment with a promise. Promise meaning if you honor your father and mother, you live long life, actually. Let, listen to uh, uh, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Let's read Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 together. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. These days, the children become so rebellious. They don't listen to father and mother. It's interesting. They enjoy whatever father and mother provides them. Like uh, nowadays, the parents want to provide their children with everything they need, like a computer, mobile phone, the nice clothes, and uh, everything they want, like a nice food. We were very poor before, but now, um, you know, they can enjoy everything thanks to their father and mother providing everything. But the interesting thing is, these days, the children become so rebellious. They don't listen to their parents, right? And in the church, it is important to teach the children how to obey their parents because this is the first step. You learn how to obey God from in your house, in your, at your home, by learning how to obey your father and mother. And there's a promise, right? That your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. This is true. If you honor your father and mother, God blesses you. Right? And secondly, the Bible teaches the wife to obey her husband. Right? I know some sisters, church sisters, they don't want to listen to this scripture, but it's there. So let's see uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 let's read it together wives submit to your own husband as to the Lord uh, of course um, later in the scripture it says husband love your wife as the Lord loves the church so husband should love uh, their wives and wives should submit 
to their husband. It is our position. Okay? Um, wives, they learn how to obey God by obeying their husband. And some sisters say, oh, my, my husband is not saved yet. He's an unbeliever. Should I obey him or not? Of course, they should obey even unbelieving uh, husband, right? Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 1 and 2. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Let's read it together. Wives, likewise be submissive to your own husband, that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives, when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Wives, like Likewise, be submissive to your own husband, that even if some do not obey the word, that means even if your husband is not believing, still you have to be submissive to your um, husband. Of course, you understand that if a husband said, do not go to church, do not read the Bible, that one you cannot obey because God is much higher. If your parents said, do not go to church, and uh, do not preach gospel to me. You cannot obey your parents in that regard because God is much, you know, God is uh, our creator. So we have to obey God in that regard. But other than that, other than your Christian life, uh, you have to be submissive to your uh, parents and your husband. That is God's command, actually. When you read the Bible, Maybe when you read some part of the Bible, you don't want to listen. Ah, oh, I don't want to listen to this one. That is your weakest point, actually. Okay? So suppose you hear, obey God, obey the word of God, obey your parents, obey, uh, you know. Then you say, ah, oh, I don't want to hear it again and again. That means uh, you're not obeying, actually. You have a problem in that, in that area of your life. Anyway, let me tell you one thing. When wives become saved and when they become very submissive to their husband according to the God's command, the husband know right away their wives have changed it actually. They know, oh, my wife was not like that. But since she became uh, a believer, a Christian, she has changed it. They notice right away. And then slowly, slowly their heart is changing. I heard this uh, story before. There was a one uh, husband who is always drinking with uh, his uh, friends, right? And his wife was very submissive, very obedient. One day, he was drinking wine with his friends very late night, like uh, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And he was just telling his friend like this, You know what, friends? My wife always listens to me, and if I go to my home right now, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., right? Very late. And if I ask her to prepare, uh, you know, the wine for us, you and me, she will do that. And there, his friend said, no way. No wife is that obedient because, uh, you know, the wives will be angry and upset. They will say no. So the, that husband said, no, 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 let's go, let's go. So they all went to his uh, home, house. Surprisingly, the wife was not sleeping, waiting for uh, her husband. And the husband said, Oh, I brought my friends. Uh, prepared, uh, you know, we want to drink more. Prepare wine and some food. And the wife said, Yes. And then she was preparing and she was, uh, you know, bringing the food before the friends and husband. The friends were so shocked. This. And they were telling that husband, you are not even, you know, you are not even human. You have this such an obedient wife, and you are harassing her like this. Uh, you ask her to prepare food at this uh, 2 a.m. You know, we don't want to be friends with you uh, anymore. And they all, you know, went away because they thought this husband is so bad. You know, because they thought the way he treats his wife is very bad. They said, you know, we don't want to be friends with you. Anyway. This is God's commandment, you know. We just obey, right? Because God knows better than us. 
And also, we have to obey these authorities of government. Uh, sometimes people always are blaming the government or president and uh, prime minister. They always blame the politicians and uh, don't do that. We Christians don't do that because uh, let's turn to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Let's read it together. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Let every soul be subject to the gover governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority, resisting the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Of course, no politician is perfect. I see so many corrupt politicians and uh, the leaders. But still, God says, obey them. Obey these authorities of government. And remember, when Apostle Paul was writing this Bible, there was a king, emperor. It was not a democratic country. When emperor says, kill him, they just kill him. No question asked. But even in that, that situation, Apostle Paul is saying that let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. Why? They are appointed by God. It doesn't mean they are perfect or they are uh, believing uh, God. No, no. But God appoints people in their position according to God's will. Our position is we have to uh, we have to obey the authorities. You see, these days, people always are uh, uh, criticizing the government. In the church, rule number one, do not talk about the politics, never. It divides the church. There's no point, actually. We do not belong to this, uh, this physical nation in this world. We belong to heaven, and we'll go to heaven after a short while. Why we care about this uh, government in this world? They fight each other, you know, they blame each other. Let them, let them do that. We just thank God for giving us this government who uh, protects us and who give us this chance to preach the gospel. Do you know that in Korea, sometimes government is not doing okay, I know that, but because we have a peace, we have an army, we have a government who protects us, that's why we can preach the gospel. Uh, without worries and even we can go out like me I'm coming to Bangladesh and preaching the gospel because our country is safe and strong and stable if not our uh, this evangelism will be disturbed so obey even the governing authorities do you know one uh, one time Jesus was asked is it lawful to pay taxes to Kesar Let's turn to Matthew chapter 22, because that was the uh, issue among the Jews. The Kesar, the Roman emperor, is not a believer, and why should we give tax to him, right? So uh, Matthew chapter 22, uh, verse 17. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Kesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. So they brought him a uh, denarius. And he said to them, Whose in, uh, image and inscription is there? Is, there, is this? Verse 21, let's read it together. They said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Which means that if you are living in this world and if there's a government, you obey them. You have to pay taxes to them. You have to support the government. Right? Of course, again, like a communist government, if they say do not go to church and persecute us, we have to fight. Because, you know, we are serving God. But other than that, other than that, we obey the government. And also in the church, we obey the church leaders. This is important. Right? The church leaders, like pastors, are the ones who deliver the message of God. 
they are preaching the word of God. And God gave that authority. And let's turn to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Hebrews 17 verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 17. Let's read it together. Obey those who rule over you, and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Obey those who rule over you, which means that God gave the leaders to the church because there's an order in the church right do you remember one time Moses married the uh, uh, Ethiopian woman and Miriam and Aaron they were accusing Moses of marrying a Gentile woman we don't know exactly what kind of woman she was the Ethiopian woman but when we see that God didn't say anything against Moses uh, maybe like uh, 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 Ruth, even though she was a Gentile woman, she was a God-fearing woman, and God didn't say anything against Moses in that regard. But God punished the Aaron and Miriam, especially Miriam, Moses' sister, for accusing Moses, because even if Moses made a mistake, it's not their position to, to, to stand against Moses. It's like a standing against God. If they have problem with Moses, they have to go to him personally and say, oh, Moses, maybe I know you're marrying this Ethiopian woman. It's not good in, in people's eyes. But they were publicly criticizing Moses and God punished them. Right? Um, Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. The church leaders, they pray for you. They watch out for you. The church leaders have responsibility to take care of the church. So when you obey them, God will bless you. In Korea, you know, still we are uh, matching brother-sister for marriage, right? Uh, these days, in this generation, it sounds like a very old-fashioned, right? But it works. Sometimes I hear that uh, some people... Uh, like a love marriage, they, they, they love one another and then they get married, but later they get divorced, actually. This love marriage doesn't last long sometimes. But surprisingly, uh, even though they never met each other, when they, uh, when pastor introduced them to each other and then when pastor arranges uh, them to get married, the marriage becomes very successful. Why? I think that's because they obey God, you know. Not the pastor. They just think that whatever pastor does is for their own benefit. They just obey. And that, that, that works, actually. The obedience is the, uh, the first thing you have to learn in your Christian life. So we always say, right, baptism is your first obedience. This time in the first retreat in Bangladesh, uh, 60 people got, took baptism. It was so touching to see them obeying God, the first commandment in their Christian life. When they go under the water, what does that mean? You know, they are dead with Christ together. Their old self is dead. Now they want to follow Jesus. In, in, and when they come out of the water, it signifies their resurrection with Jesus. Right? And then, they become united with Jesus in death and resurrection. And we follow the footsteps of Jesus. That's the meaning of the baptism. So let me tell you, uh, many people in the Bible, they were so obedient. Uh, let's turn to Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. Let's read it together. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and the Lord went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Do you know, Abraham, 
God gave him the promises and then God said, leave your hometown, your family, and go to this land I promised you. The Bible says, Abraham even didn't know where he was going. He'd never been in the land of Canaan. He, he didn't know what kind of land it was. He just left at the age of 75. I guess he was living a very comfortable life because he was rich and he, had, uh, he has established himself in this hometown. But he left everything behind. He left. Can you do that? You know, leaving everything behind. If God tells you to go to another country, huh? can you do that? Without knowing what kind of country it is, you know. Um, that's what Abraham did. And, and Abraham, he was a man of obedience. Let's turn to uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 23. Genesis chapter 17, verse 23. Let me read. So Abraham took Ishmael, his son, all who were born in his house, and all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskins, that the very same day as God has said to him. God told him, get circumcision for every male in your household. Circumcision is very painful. It's like a surgery, cutting the flesh. But you know what? He did on the same day. What we see in Abraham's life is he never delay. When God tells him to do something, he never delays. He just keeps God's commandment right away. Circumcision? Yes, God. Go to the land of promise? Yes, God. He just left. He just took the circumcision. And finally, you see, uh, Genesis chapter 22, Genesis chapter 22, verse 3, uh, verse 1 to 3, Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 3. Let's read it together. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. And Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And his, he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God has told him. The next day, early in the morning, he got up and he took Isaac, he took the wood for the burnt uh, offering, he left early in the morning. He didn't hesitate, he didn't delay. This is interesting, you know. Obedience, sometimes it's easy. Why is it easy? You remember one thing. God knows better than you. God knows better than you. So, when you listen to the word of God, and when you know that, yes, God knows better than me, and God has a better plan than me, I'll just follow His commandment. So that's why I say it's easy in some sense. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 and 9 Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 and 9 let's read it together for my thoughts are not your thought nor are your ways my ways says the Lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Do you know God's idea, God's plan is much better than yours. Here, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my, uh, your ways my ways, says the Lord. They are different. 
God's thought, my thought, God's ways, my ways. Verse 9, for as the heavens are higher than the earth. Heaven is so high, right? Can you jump and touch the moon? No way. It's so high. Just like that. God's plan, God's thought is so high than your thought. That's why you have to obey God's will. Christians, in no matter what situation you are, you have to thank God. Because, you know, God has His plan for you. God has an idea for you. God is leading you to a better place, better condition. When you believe that, you just obey. I'm thinking that Abraham was, uh, when Abraham heard God telling him to uh, offer Isaac as a burnt offering, Abraham could have thought like this. Wow, this Isaac is God's present, actually. God gave me this son, Isaac, at the age of 100. Why God says I have to kill him? Right? It doesn't make sense. Of course, it doesn't make any sense. But you just obey. Sometimes God gives you. Sometimes God takes from you. Do you know who said that? God gave, God takes. It's Job. Right? Let's turn to Job, chapter 1. Job, chapter 1. Job, chapter 1, verse 21. 21. Job, chapter 1, verse 21. Let's read it together. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me tell you. Sometimes when God gives us something, we don't thank Him. We just take it for granted. Like, a, you know, we are living in Korea. You are living in Korea now, right? So Korea, very advanced country. The medical service is nice. And um, everything is advanced. But have you, have you thanked God for uh, giving you a chance to, to be born in Korea and to live in Korea? Well, when I came to Bangladesh, uh, these days I'm taking the cycle rickshaw. You know cycle rickshaw? The cycle, and then there's a seat behind. So there's a guy who is, uh, you know, uh, riding cycle and taking people here and there. It's like a taxi, right? And when I sit there, Looking at the cycle driver, the rickshaw driver, working very hard in a very hot day, sweating. I'm thinking all the time, that could have been me if I had been born in Bangladesh. I could have been that cycle driver, cycle rickshaw valar, cycle driver. Why God make me born in Korea so that I can enjoy everything? I thank God every time. I'm riding this cycle rickshaw because there's no reason, you know, why I was born in Korea, not in Bangladesh. I could have, I could have, I could be this cycle rickshaw driver. Very tough job, actually. Very difficult. Uh, sometimes uh, three people sitting behind, and then there's a uh, up here a little bit. They suffer so much sweating, and then sometimes they get off, and then they are pulling the cycle. And I thank God. Job said, The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the no name of the Lord. When you become sick, for example, suppose you get cancer, you're dying. You have to thank God. You have to tell God, God, you have a plan for me. And also, if I die of cancer, I'll be joining heaven soon. God, thank you so much for giving me cancer. God, I was so busy in my job, I, I didn't have time to think about you and read the Bible, or you know, I uh, didn't have a chance to, to pray more. But now I have cancer, I cannot work. I have plenty of time, I will read more Bible, I will meditate on the Word. 
this is a chance to be close to you with my sickness. God, thank you so much. Or when God, you know, when you lose your job, suppose, don't complain. Just thank God. God, now I know even job I had was your grace. God, please give me another job so that I can, I can make money and I can serve you and, and can, I can be the light and salt of this world. Without job, sometimes I cannot you know, glorify you, God. Just give me a job like that. You become humble, right? Whatever situation you are in, if you obey God and if you know God has better plan for you, you thank God. And Job chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 also. Job chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Let's read it together. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? In all this Job did not sin with his lips. I like Job in this regard. He said, Sometimes you know, God gives good. Um, shall we indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? Which means sometimes God treats us very well. Sometimes we face adversity or difficulties. Why we complain? We never complain when God treats us very well. Like, why God, you give me this good job? God, why you keep me healthy? You never complain. And you never think sometimes. So Job didn't commit sin. Right? Let's remember, as a Christian, one of the evidence that you are a true believer is that you know that your life is in God's hands. Whatever happens in your life is for your own good. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, uh, 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Let's read it together. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Yes, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. That's true. Verse 32. Verse 32. Let's read it together. He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He did not spare his own son. He gave everything to us. Which means that he wants to give us more and more. So why these uh, difficulties we face in our life? There's a reason. God tests you. God trains you. God makes you humble. That's why you have to thank God in no matter what situation we are in. My father uh, passed away when I was 19 years old, right? Uh, and then I became the one who supported my family. I really thank God because even though it was not easy, um, so when I was in college, I had to work very hard to support my family. I was working uh, as a tutor all the time, uh, five years. Sometimes I was staying in the house of that, my students. And it's not easy you know, to stay in other people's house because uh, when you eat, you don't feel comfortable. You are guest all the time, right? Uh, you always uh, feel the tension uh, because also if their grade goes uh, not good, then you don't feel comfortable because you are the tutor. You have to uh, teach the, your students so that they can get a good grade. But I, I think that that was a really good opportunity for me to learn how to, how to uh, survive, how to work. It, was, it really trained me. Right? So I thank God for that opportunity. If you trust God, do not trust your own idea or your own plan. Do not trust your own knowledge or your own uh, experience, actually. This is the first step. When you trust God, you trust Him completely, 100%. If not, you cannot obey God willingly, right? Let's turn to Luke chapter 5. 
that happened to Peter. Luke chapter 5. Verse 4 and 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. Let's read it together. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Jesus was preaching. And suddenly, Jesus told Peter, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. Why don't you fish? And Peter said, Master, we, we were fishing whole night and got nothing. And you know, Jesus was a carpenter. Peter was a fisherman whole time. Whose experience is better? Of course, Peter. But Peter said something really interesting. Nevertheless, at your word, at your word, I will let down the net. Why? He said, at your word. Because you know where Jesus was at the time? Verse 3. Verse 3. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Peter was right in that boat. Jesus took Peter's boat, and Jesus was teaching from that boat. So Peter was right next to Jesus, listening to Jesus. That's why he was so impressed by the word of Jesus. Wow, his teaching is so good. And then he said, at your word, at your word, I will let down the net. So this is what happens to you. If you read the Bible more, if you see everything, if you learn all the lessons from the Bible, it's very easy to obey God. And what happened? Verse 6. Let's read it together. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. Obedience comes from faith. When you trust God, then you obey God. Right? Let's turn to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 18. Let me read Acts chapter 4, verse 18. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Verse 19 and 20. Let's read it together. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. You see, Peter and John was preaching the gospel. After they received the Holy Spirit, they were boldly speaking the word of God. And the, the Jews, the leaders of the Jews, they caught them. And they said in verse 18, Do not speak at all, or, nor teach in the name of Jesus. That's what they said. And verse 19, Peter and John answered, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. Should I listen to God or should I listen to you? You judge. They didn't listen to people. They listened to God. Even though, even if that means that they might die. These Jewish leaders, they had the authority to kill Peter and John. But they said, no, no, no. We want to listen to God. Verse 20, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. If you really trust God, then you don't fear people. And then you just obey God no matter what. It doesn't matter what other people say. It doesn't matter whether they criticize you or blame you or accuse you. You just listen to God and obey. And King Saul... He failed in this regard. Do you know that? King Saul. One time, God told him to destroy Amalekites. Absolutely. Because Amalekites were really sinful people. Kill all the animals. Kill all the people. But King Saul didn't obey God. You know why? Because he feared people. 
Let's turn to 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Uh, verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 3. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. You know, some people say, see this, God says kill even the babies, infant. Is it gracious God? Well, you have to think about this one. We know God's thought is higher than our thought, right? This infant, as we know from the Bible, if this infant die, uh, not reaching the age whether uh, when they discern good and evil, they go to heaven, right? That's what we believe. Because that's why we preach the gospel when the uh, children become seven, eight, or nine. But below that, they don't even know what sin is. But the fact is Jesus died for the whole world from Adam to the last man. So Jesus even took away their sins too. So they cannot sin. They cannot commit the sin of not trusting Jesus. You know, why people go to hell? Because they do not believe Jesus. But when they are too young, they cannot commit the sin of not believing Jesus. And this infant, suppose the, all the others die. Because God said, utterly destroy Amalekites. If their parents die, if they are left like that, they would be more miserable. Anyway, there's a reason why God told, utterly destroy them. Right? There might be other reasons we don't understand. But we believe that God's wisdom is much higher than ours. But what happened was, verse 9, But Saul and the people spared Agak and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good, and were unwilling to utterly destroy them, but everything despised and worthless that they utterly destroyed. So Saul didn't obey God by sparing this Agak and the good sheep and the animals. Later, he confessed why he did it. Verse 24, let's read it together. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I fear the people and obeyed their voice. I fear the people. This is his confession. Because people were saying, King, why should we kill this good animal? We could have taken them. We don't want to kill them. And Saul listened to the people rather than to God. Don't do that. People are nothing, you know. So, Samuel said this is really, I think you know this scripture very well, verse 22 and 23. Let's read it together. So, Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. I want you to remember this scripture. Has the Lord, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? God wants your obedience than your sacrifice. Suppose you sacrifice your lamb and your oxen, whatever animal you have. Of course, you know, even giving sacrifice is, uh, you know, they are very valuable, basically. You are giving up on many things when you sacrifice animals for God. But God says, no, obedience is more important. Verse 23, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion against God and stubbornness, not listening to God, holding on to your own idea. It's like a idolatry. You're worshiping idols, right? God wants you to obey His word more than anything else. 
And this is how we show that we are respecting God. Do you honor God? Do you respect God? Then obey God. All the stars, everything in the universe, they stand up when God called to them. But sometimes we Christians, we are called God's children. We don't listen to Him. And all the creation, look at us, why they are doing this? You know, these Christians, so-called God's children, they do not obey God. Rebellion and stubbornness is like a witchcraft. It's like a iniquity. That's why King Saul was rejected by God. Jesus showed humbleness and obedience. So we have to learn from Jesus. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 8. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. Let's read it together. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Jesus became so humble and became a human being, and he obeyed God to the point of death. To the point of death means... Even if it means dying for God, he obeyed God. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Let's read it together. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Do you think it was easy for Jesus to die on the cross? No way. He was 100% human. As 100% human, he felt the same pain as we feel in our flesh. So if you want to know how much Jesus suffered, just imagine that you put nail in your palm, no, nailing your hand and putting the crown of thorns and beaten more than 100 times. Because Jesus knew how painful it would be, he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. This is a great lesson today. Not as I will, but as you will. Let your will be done in this world. This is one of the uh, part of the, uh, the prayer, right? The prayer Jesus taught. Your will be done in this world, on this earth. And your God's will be done in your life. So we have to all pray, not as I will, but as you will. And that is the genuine Christian life. So let me tell you one thing. Remember, God loves you. God has a better plan for you. You remember Job? Ten children died on the same day. Seven sons, three daughters died on the same day. All his wealth was taken one day. Even whole body, he becomes sick. But there was a will of God. How many people were encouraged by the book of Job? And at the end of the book of Job, you remember, God gave another 10 children. 10 are in heaven, 10 are there, 20. God blessed him double. And for wealth, God gave him double. Everything became double, the wealth. He became so rich. And I guess that you know, Job is now in heaven, and he believes that, yes, that time of uh, suffering, it was not easy, but it was very short. And because of that time I endured, now I'm enjoying all this reward and glory with God, and God blessed me double than before. He understands now 
why he suffered. And he understand that it was a blessing of God. Right? So we should all also uh, obey just like as Job did, as Jesus did. We have to say, not as I will, but as you will. Your will be done in my life. God, I want to obey you. No matter what happens in my life. No complaint. No. No regret. We just, we know that God works for good in our life all the time. So let's learn how to be obedient to God because that is how we glorify God and please God all the more in our life. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, Jesus died for us and now we are Jesus, not our own. And that's why we have to obey our Lord more and more. One time Jesus said, you call me Lord, but why you don't obey my word? So Lord, we want to obey God and we want to obey our Lord more and more so that we can glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. Many times we are following our own will, our own idea, our own plan. But Lord, we know you have a better plan, better thought. So we want to obey you. So Lord, give us obedient heart so that we do not waste any time following these worldly things or our own desire, but let us obey you more and more in coming days. And Lord, we trust you. We know you have the best plan for us. Help us to listen to you always carefully so that we can find your will and we can fulfill your will until we leave this world and join you in heaven. Thank you so much for this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.